Yes, thank you, my sister. God bless you. Um, blessings unto you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. They tried my Lord and Master. What a fitting song you sang this morning, not knowing that the topic today would be the trials of Jesus Christ. They tried my Lord. The Jews tried him, and the Romans tried him. He was tried in the Roman court and before the high priest, the uh, Sanhedrin's, and uh, we see the outcome was that they said, guilty, crucify him. And uh, so we're going to look at that today from the different perspective of the disciples that were present at the time. And so I glorify God. Um, I see you there, Sister Sophia. Would you like to sing a song um, this morning before we continue, Sister Sophia? Okay. God bless. God bless you. Happy Sabbath to you. Blessings. God bless May you. you. Thank uh, you. Happy Sabbath to you. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I'm only human. I'm just a woman. Help me believe. In what I could be, and all that I am, show me the stairway that I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus, best of all and have seen of you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be nothing. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Do you remember when you walk a moment? Well, Jesus, you know, if you look down below, it works now and then. Pushing and choosing, that cloud as my mind. So for your sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that all I had seen of you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, for my sake, teach me to day. One day at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, best of all I have seen of you, just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do, yesterday goes. Sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be nothing. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Lord, help me today. 
Praise God. Amen. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. Praise God. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Praise God. We just give God thanks and praise. Amen. We are going to ask God to uh, bless our, our giving today, those who have to give, those who have an offering, and uh, you have put something aside for the glory of God. We're going to ask the Lord to bless you and, and to bless your gift that you have uh, put aside for the glory of God. Um, so, Sister Sophia, go ahead and offer that word of prayer, please. Thank the Lord. Blessings unto his holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his wonderful holy name. Thank you, my sister, for that uh, wonderful prayer. We're going to go into uh, the word where we're going to look at the uh, trials of Jesus Christ. The trials of Jesus Christ. Um, my dear brother, I, I see you here online. Would you Would you like to render a uh, verse of a song before we go into it um, brother d i see you there i'm not sure if you're at a good place where you can render a verse of a song for us today if that's possible praise the lord brother d amen yeah. yes praise god bless you and to all who are on the line, to you pastors and the First Family, and to all the listeners and by on Facebook and 
and what's up and what's line you on this morning. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. So soon, King. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm here on the line listening this morning, and it is it is it is a joy. <coughs> it is joy and and full of love in my heart. Just to listen and hear the word of God and to meditate and keep my mind on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I sing this song. Uh, it's a song that rests on my heart all week, and I sing it all the time. But sometimes you have a song that burning in your soul, and it brings you a breakthrough. It brings you joy and peace in your mind and in your thoughts. Yes. And let people walk in the spirit. Mm. Amen. Hope it be a blessing to somebody this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. If I have that I oh, yeah. should not ask for, if I pray for the things selfishly, if I ask for myself and not, not for my neighbor, take this veil yes. from my eyes and let me Not my will, but thy be. Praise Jesus, may this say, try to be mine. Every day, 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 when this robe, this robe of flesh that I wear makes me falter, guide my steps, hold my hand on the way. If I love all my friends, and serve, serve them only, if I serve all the rich and not the poor, mm-hmm. so what good would I have done for Christ, Christ my Savior, since my enemy, since my enemy, do the same. It's not my will, but I am. Praise Jesus. May the same prayer be mine every day. Yes. When this robe, this robe of flesh that I his name hallelujah Hallelujah. praise god bless his name hallelujah bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord bless his name hallelujah hallelujah yes 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 lord yes lord jesus 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 yes lord Hold my hand, Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless his name. Bless his name. Truly, God is good. God is good. God is good. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless his name. Thank you, man of God. Bless God. Bless God. Thank you for blessing our souls this morning. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. The mighty God, the mighty Savior, the Malik, Mohashiach. Bless his name. Bless the name of Jesus. Hamashiach. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He is the Messiah this morning. And he is in the midst to bless and to do us good. Praise God. I want to thank God for each and every one of you. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King, the Messiah, the Hamasiach. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord God forevermore. For he is our soon coming King. Praise God forevermore. Uh, what a God, what a God, what a mighty God we serve. We're going to look at the trials of Jesus Christ uh, this morning. And uh, as we look at the trials of Jesus Christ, maybe we, we, we might want to put ourselves in the midst of the trial. We want to put ourselves in the midst of the trial. <clears throat> now is the time that the Lord wants us to reflect not that we have not talked about and reflect on his uh, crucifixion and what he has done so that we might have salvation. Many people believe that the lamb that was on the table did not represent Jesus Christ, much less the plan of salvation where our sins have been forgiven, we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And blood had to be shed. Blood had to be shed. <clears throat> and if there was no blood shed, there would not be any redemption. And if there was no redemption, <clears throat> then we would not have hope even in this world, much less hope in the new world to come. But this same Messiah, this same Jesus Christ, as he is called in the Greek, he had to go through some things for you and for me. Many people don't understand the implication of the lamb being led as a slaughtered. In the, the culture of uh, the Africans and the shepherds back in the, the olden time, when they select a sheep to be slaughtered or to be killed, that sheep that they led to the slaughtering ground, if he was quiet, or that sheep goes to the slaughtering ground in a quiet manner, they know that they were going to have a good kill. They know that was a good sheep. But if the sheep, while leading the sheep to the slaughtering pen, the sheep would be crying and making a lot of noise, resisting, not following the lead of the shepherd, they know that they would have a difficult time sacrificing or killing that sheep. And that's why it was said that he was led and he opened not his mouth, but he led, he was led to Calvary and he died without resisting. He died without 
trying to defend himself. He died without trying to fight back as it is and it would be told and said. And he hang his head and die. Nevertheless, uh, let us look at uh, the book of St. Matthew chapter 26. Let's go to St. Matthew chapter 26 as we will start from there. The first book that is in the Bible as the New Testament. However, uh, it is said that uh, Mark, St. Mark would be one of the first writers that uh, recorded the gospel. But nevertheless, let us start with St. Matthew chapter 26. And let us look at verse 57 as we investigate the trials of Jesus Christ. Let us make note that this was around the year 30, 33 AD, or but, but better yet, we would, would place it around 33 AD because Jesus Christ's ministry lasted up until about, he was what, 33 and a half years old or something like that. Um, nevertheless, let us bear in mind that this trial took place early in the night or early in the morning, late in the night rather, or early in the morning. Many of this trial took place after he was led from the garden, after he was led from the garden. And let us look uh, and see how this was done. Uh, based upon the the arrest. So let us start basically from verse 47. I'm going to um, read a little bit about from verse 47 there. Uh, and let me see uh, what I can come up with from verse 47. And then I'll ask someone to read from verse 57. So we we'll look at the betrayal and the arrest of Jesus Christ. And then we're going to look at the trial. So in verse 47 of Matthew chapter 26, it says, And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staff from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now I'm reading from the King James Version at this moment. Now he that betrayed him gave them sign and saying, Whomever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast and that was verse uh, 48 now when we look at verse 49 it says and forthwith he came to Jesus and said hail master and he kissed him and Jesus said unto him friend wherefore art thou come in other words where are you coming from then came they and laid hands on Jesus and uh, took him. And uh, behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ears. All right. So we, we see right there where blood was now being shed again. But the blood that was being shed at that moment should not be shed, and therefore Jesus did something miraculous at that moment. And so then Jesus said unto him, Put up again thy sword into thy place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. And thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall uh, presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that this or uh, thus it must be? And in the same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scripture of the prophets might be fulfilled. 
And so then all the disciples forsook him and they fled. So here it is. My mm -hmm. sister sang that song this morning. They tried my Lord. He was all alone. The disciples and many others that were with him, they fled. They ran away. They did not want to get caught. They did not want to be a part of this trial. They did not want to be in prison. And so it is with many people today. They don't want to be in prison with the Lord Jesus Christ. They want to be free to enjoy their big luxury homes and their big 72-inch um, color TV and, and sit in their lazy boy chair and all of that stuff. They rather be um, enjoying all the goodness and the perks and the, the riches of life. The prosperity of life they rather do that than to suffer with Christ and so many people today preach a, a gospel of prosperity that you will not suffer when you come to Christ but contrary to that you need to understand that when you come to Christ when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ that's the time when you are going to suffer the most but it's going to be a different kinds of suffering and the suffering that you will go through joy will come in the morning when you overcome your trials and tribulation, you feel a different joy. You feel a euphoria that you cannot explain to your friends. So we're going to read from verse 57 now. And we want to see how this man, Jesus Christ, was tried before uh, Cephas, the, uh, the chief or the high priest of the Jews and the Sangerians. We're talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. And um, I don't know if uh, someone's line is open. You want to start that reading for me. If your line is not open and you'd like to read, you can press star six and it will open your line for you. And uh, you can read. As I know you are reading from the King's James Version. Let me go to my uh, Hebrew Bible text right here. Let me go to my Hebrew Bible text, Matthew. Let me see if I have the correct one here. Matthew. Okay. see Matthew all right so Matthew chapter 26 is there anyone have their um, Bibles open and your line open you want to read from verse 57 for me as I follow along and the rest of us follow along with you verse 57 and maybe I have to stop you um, doing the reading to do some explanation so let's see how we can get that done all right who will read Matthew 26 from verse 57 Praise the Lord. I will read. Praise God. All right. Praise God. For you. Amen. <laughs> and they, and they that had lay hold on Jesus led him away to Caesar, uh, 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 the high priest, uh, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Caesar. Followed him off the uh, afar uh, off. Uh, yes. <coughs> followed him uh, uh, far off unto the high priest's place, and went and went in and sat with with the servant to see the end. Fifty nine. Now the chief priests and elders and all the the council saw. Mm -hmm. thought Paul's witness against Jesus mm -hmm. to put him to death. Mm -hmm. But found not none, but found none. Yea, through many false witness came, yet found they none. Mm -hmm. At the last at the Lord came two false witness and said this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and mm -hmm. said unto him, Answer thou nothing? Mm -hmm. What this which be witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace mm -hmm. and and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tellest tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, 
thou sayest, say. Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man, Son of Man, sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of him. Mm -hmm. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He had spoken blasphemy. <coughs> what further need have we of witness? Mm -hmm. For now ye have heard his blasphemy. What thinketh he? They, they answered and said, he is guilty of death. Mm -hmm. Then said they, peace in his faith, mm. and, and, and buffered him, him. Mm -hmm. and set him, and other smote him with the palm of their hand, mm -hmm. saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that's All right, you may stop there. All right, thank you so much. So here we see in Matthew chapter 26 from 50, verse 57 all the way to uh, verse 50, verse 68. <clears throat> we see here where Jesus was first brought before the, um, the high priest, Seophas, and also before the centurions. Um, the, San, the, the Sanhedrins, rather. And so, as the scripture said that they led him, they took hold of Jesus Christ uh, while he was in the garden. <clears throat> and they took him to Cephas, the high priest. And at the time, Cephas was a high priest, but he was actually under the control of the Romans, uh, of the Roman Empire. He was influenced, he was one of the high priests who was influenced by the Romans. But this high priest felt that his, um, his seat was somewhat um, threatened by this man, Jesus Christ, because this man, Jesus Christ, was saying some things that were not in line with what they were teaching at the time. And so the scribes, and the, uh, the, which are the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the elders, uh, they were all assembled. They all came together now. And this is where they were trying Jesus Christ as the Jewish um, set of leaders were, were trying him. But here it said that one of his disciples, Peter, um, followed to see what they would do, to see where they were taking him. And so they took him to the, uh, the palace, one of the, the uh, palaces that were uh, designated, that were set up. And uh, one of the palaces that these high priests would would um, favor, uh, and uh, here it is, they tried him basically in secret somewhat. Now the chief priests and the elders, verse 59, and the council sought false witnesses. So they brought in witnesses at this moment. So at this moment, they brought in witnesses, just like many of you today, you have been tried, sometimes secretly. And sometimes there are false witnesses that are already set up to come in and to speak against you, to uh, speak against you in terms of uh, uh, trying to set you up so that uh, your, 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 case, your case would actually uh, be, be a case where you will be found guilty. And so there are times people will come and they don't witness they did not hear they did not see what 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 was what was going on so these false witnesses were witnesses that were set up they were paid off and said um this fellow um says that i am able to destroy the temple of god now when jesus said that uh, back in the days jesus christ was then referring to himself at the time when Jesus Christ said that, you see, this temple referring to himself, that this temple will be cast down, uh, will be destroyed, and within three days, it, uh, this temple, you will see, will rise again. So here they were using those words of Jesus Christ and was declaring that he was saying that he will destroy this temple, which was the temple Solomon, and build it back in three days 
and they know that that is impossible in the sight of men. And so the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer thou nothing? What is it that the, these witnesses are saying unto you? You're not defending yourself. You are not saying whether they are speaking the truth or not. What is it? Why are you so quiet? Why are you not saying anything? Um, so it says Jesus held his peace. And the, the high priest answered again and said unto him, <clears throat> You know what? I, 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 I adjure you. I assume. I am saying right now that uh, these people are saying the truth then. And here it is, he is uh, actually swearing by God. He is now swearing by God, as he says, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou uh, tell us whether thou be the Christ or not. So now he's, 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 he's prompting Jesus Christ. He is prompting Jesus Christ, and it's almost like, you know, sometimes you are, um, you are saying certain things, and it's almost like you're calling down God from heaven, and you're saying, listen, man, and sometimes people point their fingers. Sometimes people get angry. Sometimes people get in up in people's face and say, "Listen, man, you know, listen. I adjure you. I'm telling you, I'm, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm saying to you that, you know, I, I, sometimes people say they swear on their mother's grave. Sometimes, and all of these things. This is what this um, high priest was actually doing here in front of Jesus and was saying to Jesus Christ saying that listen I need you to tell us today I need you to tell us now you know whether you are the Christ the son of God or not but Jesus said listen you said it thou said it really you know you said that who I am you telling me who I am but Jesus said nevertheless I say unto you listen hereafter you shall see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power now, Jesus Christ didn't say, you shall see me. He, Jesus Christ, in, in, in other words, these words that he said here, he was referring to himself, but at the same time, he was referring to himself in a futuristic manner, not in the present situation or not in the current situation or not in the current um, present that he's in. But he's speaking futuristic that, listen, one day in the future, but he didn't say that to them. He didn't make it plain to them. But he was speaking in a manner in which um, he was speaking of himself, but not plainly um, to, to them. And he says, hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And so the high priest took that what he said to say that he's blaspheming because he is now saying that he is going to be um, um, oh, sitting um, with God or he's going to be God or he is God and he's going to have all these power and this is how the, the high priest was just yes, taking it and then the high priest he, he, he took his clothes when he says he rent his clothes meaning not that he ripped his clothes off basically but that he you know he picked up his clothes put his, his clothes together you know sometimes uh, you know you see a man he starts to you know draw his clothes draw his shirt together draw his pants together draw his belt together you know so he was actually and said um listen now you hear he has spoken blasphemy whether uh, and so the high priest was now adamant the high priest was now stern the high priest was now angry he was now stirred up and he was saying listen you have heard him spoken here it is he has said it himself with his own words with his own mouth um what further need of you any other witnesses to hear anything else? Behold, now you have heard this blasphemy at this moment that this man has said. Um, and so he says, what do you think right now? And they answered the rest of them and said, he is guilty of death. And so when uh, they declared that he is guilty of death, the, 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 the others that were, were around, they began to spit in his face. They began to buffet him, making fun of him. When he said buffet him, they bullied him and uh, making fun of him, mocking him. And, and others smote him with the palm of their hands. All right. And, and they say unto him now, if, if you are such a, a, a great prophet, if you are such a, a, a great uh, man who with, with power, tell us which one of us has smote you now. Uh, and so that's what they were doing at this moment. But nevertheless, Jesus Christ held his peace. And so this was the trial 
before the Jewish council. Um, the next chapter, 27, will tell us about the trial before um, the Roman council or before the Roman Empire council. All right, so with all that said, anyone have any question at this time, um, press star six, open your line. Maybe you might want to ask a question. Maybe you might want to add something to what I've said. Is, is there such a one before I move on? All right, so <clears throat> let's move on to verse, uh, uh, chapter 27 before we go to um, any of the other gospel. We want to go, go to uh, chapter 27 in a little bit, and let's look at uh, chapter 27. So let's, let's get another reader. Is there another reader who can start reading from verse 1 in chapter 27? Um, when the morning was come and all the chief priests and elders... Um, they now took Jesus uh, Christ to, to, to put him to death. But here, before they do that, they had taken him to another place. All right, Mat Matthew 27, let's quickly read um, the event before Pilate, Jesus' interrogation before Pilate. We want to go to verse uh, 11. Let's go to verse 11 of uh, Matthew 27. All right, so let's 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 ask your sister Sophia to go ahead and read that for me. Yeah, sister Sophia, verse verse 11 if if you have your bible with you. If not, we'll get someone else. Yeah. Yeah, verse 11. You can read for me. Starting from verse 11. Yes, yes. And Jesus um, stood before the governor. Yeah. Oh, Lord. All right, Matthew 27, you got it? If somebody, they go ahead. All right, so someone else go. She's still trying to um, get it together. All right, anyone else? All right, go ahead, go ahead my sister. Yes. Verse, verse 11, yes. Okay, verse 11. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him, Never, neither a word, in so much that the governor marveled greatly. 15. And at that feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barnabas. Barabbas, 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 Barnab Barabbas, 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 Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was seated on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that righteous man? Mm -hmm. For I have suffered many things mm -hmm. this day in a dream because of him. Mm -hmm. But the chief priests and elders persecute the multitude mm -hmm. that they should ask for Barabbas. Yes, they persuaded and the multitude. Mm -hmm. Go to verse 22. <laughs> verse 22 now. Pilate said unto them. Go to verse 22. 22. The governor answered and said unto them, Which of the two will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? 
they all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why what evil art he done? But they cried out, the more saying, Let him be crucified. Mm -hmm. When Pilate saw that he would prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hand before the multitude saying, I am not I am innocent mm -hmm. of the blood of this righteous person. She eat of it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our, our, children. And our children. Stop there. Be all right, one. good, good. So we could stop there. And we see we see um here the second trial of Jesus Christ. And this second trial was um, by Pilate. He was brought before Pilate to be tried. And here um, it is asked in, 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 in verse 11. And as Jesus stood before the governor, <clears throat> and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And so the Messiah said unto him, Thou sayest. He said unto him, Okay, you said it. So Jesus Christ was answering um, in a manner in which he did not repeat what the governor said, but he was saying to the governor that, um, you know, you just said it. And, and so uh, the governor um, was saying that, well, if he, said, if he said what he said, then you know what? I don't find any fault with him. However, what would you like me to do with him? And they insist that they should um should crucify him or should continue to try him so it was common it was commonly uh, a tradition in rome to release uh prisoners at this time of the year at this season of the year it was a time where they would release prisoners and you must note as you call it today easter this is a time where they uh they were they called it easter and in Easter, they would release um, prisoners um, at this time. So uh, the question was asked, should we release Jesus Christ or should we release this murderer and this thief who was called Barabbas? And they said, you know what, give us Barabbas. Let um, Jesus be crucified and his blood will be upon our uh, mm -hmm. head, on, on us and our children. And, and, and so uh, they... Um, said that and Pilate um, honored what they said. So let's look at Mark chapter 14. Let's go over to Mark chapter maybe 14, 15. Let's look at St. Mark chapter 14. Uh, St. Mark chapter 14. St. Mark chapter 14. We're going to go quickly over to uh, uh, verse 40, uh, 43 a little bit and then we're going to go... Um, uh, a matter of fact, we're going to skip 43 and go down some more. Let me skip that because we, we already spoke about the arrest. We spoke about the arrest of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to go down to uh, verse, uh, a matter of fact, uh, Mark chapter 14 spoke about the trial of Jesus Christ before the um, the high priest. So let us, let us go a little bit more. Um, into this where where Pilate let us talk a little bit more about Pilate and that's chapter 15 so we're going to go to chapter 15 so Mark chapter 15 we're going to go to Mark chapter 15 all right we're going to go to Mark chapter 15 so uh, when we go to Mark chapter 15 we're going to see the trial before Pilate once again and we're going to see where it was uh, specifically said um, in verse uh, chapter in chapter 15 and in verse uh, 7 uh, going down uh, we will talk about Barabbas now and and there was a one named Barabbas which was 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 laid bound with them that had uh, made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection so there um, Mark is telling you um, about Barabbas that he was a murderer, okay? And, and, and so that's the proof uh, right there. Now, Pilate in verse 9 asked them and said, um, uh, 
will you that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Because remember, Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? In, in verse 2 of uh, chapter 15 of Mark, we see here again, And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered and said, Thou sayest, right? So we see that. Um, then now we go down back to verse 9. And uh, Pilate answered and said to them, Listen, this man said that, uh, you know, he's the king of the Jews. Shall I release him? And, uh, and, 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 and um, asking you, um, you know, plainly, should I uh, release Barabbas or should I release Jesus, this man who says, yes, he is king of the Jew? And so they cried louder and said, um, you know, we need you to, um, to crucify this man. So let's look at verse 10, 11, and, 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 and 12. Uh, for he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. So how did they knew that? Because as I said earlier, the chief priests and the Roman leaders were in league with each other. They were in line with each other. All right. That's why they were able to do this trial so early or so late in the night, early in the morning. And we're talking about, um, we're talking about what? Midnight. You're talking about roughly midnight. One of the, the disciples um, told you that it's really, really around midnight that the trial um, began. And this trial went on into the, uh, the, uh, the um, would you say, early or late, late night after 12. This went into the 3 a.m. Um, uh, going all the way back to actually um, 6 a.m. The trial was going on. So many people were asleep. So basically this was ba the, the, the counselors that were up. This were the chief priests that were up, the high priests that were up, the other counselors, and uh, they were up at this time doing this trial. Pilate happens to be in town around that time because he came in to supervise um, what was going on in Jerusalem at the time to make sure that the ingathering of the Jews as they come around for the, the Lord's, uh, for the Passover, they were behaving themselves. They would be doing the right thing. They would not be creating a disturbance. So Pilate was, was, was in town. And they took him to Pilate now. And then Pilate answered and said, um, you know, listen, who should we um, crucify? And what should I do with him? And so the, 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 um, the, the high priest and, and Pilate knew uh, already what they were up to. Our pilot knew what the high priest was up to already because they had discussed this prior. But the chief priest moved the people. So now the chief priest starts to stir up the people. That's verse 11. The chief priest starts to stir up the people um, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. Um, so the chief priest, um, what you call, start to influence the people, push the people. And they become adamant towards Pilate. And Pilate answered and said in verse 12 um, uh, unto them, What will, will, will then that I should do unto him whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried again, um, Crucify him. Then Pilate said, um, Why? Uh, what evil has he done? And, and they cried out even more angrily exceedingly louder yeah. crucify him and and so Pilate willingly to consent uh the people they he released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus um to be crucified and so uh they scourge him the the the, the men uh who were present at the time began to to mock him buffet him scourge him and and so forth um Another, another thing that I can bring out to some of you that many of you don't know, many of you probably don't know this, but I bring it out to you um, in this study um, that they crowned Jesus Christ here. Now, how could he be king of the Jews when he was not crowned? He was never crowned, and a king cannot be a king unless he's crowned. And so at this particular time, Jesus was then crowned. And that's why Jesus Christ even said unto them that they know not what they are doing. They know not what they do. Because here at this particular time, they are about to crown him as king. 
the crown that Jesus Christ received was a, a, a thorny crown, but however, he was still crowned. And a king, to be a king, must be crowned. Uh, a coronation must be done. And this was the coronation of Jesus Christ, solidifying that Jesus Christ is and was a king. And this was done here in verse 16, 17, um, and 18. And the soldiers led him away unto the hall called uh, uh, Praetorium, uh, Praetorium. And they called together the whole um, band. And this was a, a very common place, an astute place. This was a place of great importance. And they took him to this particular hall. And they clothed him with, um, with a different clothes. They put a, a robe upon him. Uh, here it is, the description is given a purple, uh, a purple clothes, a purple robe they put upon him. And they plaited a crown of thorn and put it on his head. This time that they were doing this was a time that the, 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 uh, the Israelites, the Hebrews, would crown their king. The time that Jesus Christ received this crowning was also the crown. If you go to the, the book of Chronicles, we'll read about the crowning of even, um, was it King David or King, um, King David or King Solomon? One of them. But during this time, um, the, 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 the Hebrews or the Israelites would normally crown their kings. And it so happens that during this time, they crowned Jesus Christ as king. Now, I just thought I'd bring that out to you because many of you don't understand or maybe would, would, uh, would think like I did. Back in the days, I was thinking that Jesus Christ was king and he was king of king and lord of lords. But that's a little different from this crowning as king right here. This crowning right here was a crowning of mockery. But even though it was a crowning of mockery, it was actually a true crowning of Jesus Christ as king of the Jews. Now you don't have to you don't have to believe me for that, but you can go and and, and check the records in in Chronicle. But I'm not doing that study of uh, Jesus Christ being crowned as King right here. But I just thought I brought that out. So when they crowned him, so interestingly in verse 18, when they crowned him, look at what they said, and began to salute him, hail King of the Jews. That was what the crowning was for. Amen. Even though it wasn't a golden crown or a silver crown or a crown made of, of golds and stars and whatever, it was still the crowning of a king. And at the same time, they were making fun of him and, and, and not understanding that they were crowning him king of the Jews. Wow. I just thought I'd, I just thought I'd bring that out, you know. Um, so so uh, when we... When we look at this um, recollection of uh, our brother, St. Mark, the disciple of Jesus Christ, we see the importantness of not only the sentence uh, to death to be crucified, but we see also the crowning. And we saw uh, where Pilate says, listen, I, I, I really didn't find any fault with him, but because you insist, we are going to follow through with what you're requesting so now let us go um to luke uh chapter luke chapter 22 let's go to luke chapter 22 as we we concluded here luke chapter 22 any questions feel free to press star six and ask a question right now before i go into luke chapter 22 which is really kind of going over uh some of the same thing but going over it in a much uh, different details. All right. Um, Luke chapter 22. Anyone, anyone have a question? Anyone have uh, a comment that they would like to make real quickly before I move on? All right. Okay. So far, so good. Everybody's all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Luke chapter 22, we're going to go over to Luke chapter 22. Um, all right, this is another trial again. This is the same trial, but this is, is being um, um, explained or, or, or brought to us through the, the eyes uh, of, of, of St. Luke. Uh, so St. Luke, uh, which then 
uh, later on would be called the apostle of Jesus Christ. Um, at this moment, he was a disciple of Jesus Christ when this took place. And when he wrote the, the epistles or he wrote the synopsis of the gospel, um, he told us a little bit of what took place and what happened. So here it is. We had uh, in St. Luke chapter 22 uh, from verse 47, we had a betrayal of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. And we need to also understand that um, there were more than one Judas in the Bible. There were more than one Judas. And Jesus had another disciple who, under the same name, but this one was Iscariot. So that's why it's usually say that Judah, um, um, Judas is, 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 is Iscariot to identify this particular Judas. I just thought I brought that out to you. All right. Now, um, Jesus Christ said in, 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 in the, the arrest, when they arrested him, he said, look, uh, verse 53, for so long I've been with you, verse 52 and 53, for so long I've been with you, for so long I've been around you, right? Um, but now you come out against me like I'm a thief. You come against me with swords and with staff to take me. I've been with you in the temples. I've been with you all over the place. And yet you did not take me then. Why is it that you did not take me then? But now under the, 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 this is the hour and the power of darkness. Under the hour and the power of darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring this out to you again. This was a dark hour of the night. This was a dark hour of the night. According to Genesis the evening and the day would be the day, would be the first day, the evening and the morning, which meaning the, 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 the sunset of, the, of, of, of one day will begin another day. So the day begins in the evening. And what we learned is that the dark moon starts the month, but the darkness, the darkness bring forth the light. Here it is, they are taking Jesus Christ in the darkness, who is the light. Jesus Christ, who is the light, is now going to come forth from the darkness. So I'm just bringing these two together. I'm bringing this um, analogy to you, that under the cover of darkness, they came and they bring him, they arrest him, which is bringing to the close of one era. So it's bringing to the close now where the lamb is going to be slayed. Are you with me, somebody? Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The lamb now is going to be slayed. And here it is. They are preparing things now. Things are in motion. This is a preparation for the lamb to be slain. And the lamb that was slain was slain when? When was it slain? In the evening, in the darkness, in the, in the evening or in the, the latter part of the day. So here it is, they took him and they arrest him and they brought him away. So from the darkness comes our salvation. And that's what the dark moon represents in, in somewhat. And I, I'm going I'm to leave that alone because we're not talking about the dark moon. Because there are two dark moons based on the studies that I've done. I learned that there's one dark moon that ends the month and another dark moon that starts the new month. And that's why the Bible says that when we see the, the new moon, so the new moon, another word for the new moon is the dark moon. And the new moon has uh, uh, one, one phase that the, 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 the month ends. And when the month ends, we have that first dark moon to signify the end of a month. And then we have the next day brings in the, the new moon, which is still dark, and it starts another month. And we start to count from that from that uh, time, the days, we start the count from that time, the days moving forward. So here it is that Jesus Christ would be led to be crucified. And this happens after the Passover. This happens after he had passed over. This happens after he introduced to the disciples the Lord's Supper. So he ended, the, the Passover was ended that evening which was into the night okay and he, he he opened the door for what is called the pass of the the lord's supper he now opened the door for the lord's supper that same night so the the dark moon 
actually end, end up showing us the ending and the beginning of, uh, of, of, of something. The ending and the beginning of something. So that's what the dark moon represents. And that's why these things now happens in the night part of the day. This is the night part of the day. So, all right, let me leave that alone now. I don't have much time. So as we move forward, we see the trial here took place in the late night. Talking about... Um, Moment of your life. Yeah, talking about the, the time that's leading up to the dawn and uh, uh, the sunrise. All right, talking about this time. So uh, Jesus was then uh, buffeted. Jesus was then taken. Uh, and during this time, Peter denied him. We know about that. Uh, so let, let us look at uh, verse 63 now of Luke chapter 22. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him they mocked him they smote him okay they they, they they began to rough him up and you know when you are a prisoner they rough you up so they are roughing him up but he did not retaliate it he did not lash back and when they and when they had, had blindfolded him they struck him on the face now saint luke is telling you a little more giving you more details of what happened to jesus christ so most of you, you will read Matthew, Mark, and, and, and you will stop there. And maybe you won't read Luke and maybe you won't read John. But they give you a little more details of what also happens to him. So not because Matthew tells you what happens to him in, 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 in uh, some details, but then the other disciples tell you more, give you more details of what happened to him that very same night. And so you got to put it all together. That's why the Word of God says, I hear a little, I hear a little. So we put words upon words, precepts upon precept. We put context upon context and see what is going on. So in this context of the trial, we are seeing here that during this time, they, 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 they mocked him, make fun of him, bullied him. They hit him and they blindfolded him. And they even put a crown of thorn upon his head. So we've seen all these things happen to him in that same night. They put a thorn upon his head of crown, crowning him king of the Jew. And at the same time, they are disrespecting this king. The king of the Jews, they are disrespecting him. And the Jews are allowing it to happen because what? Why? They don't see him as their king. Why? He did not come and deliver them as they thought he would. The Messiah did not come as this Messiah of military might who would come and deliver the Jews from their agony. And so he said some things that they didn't like, and they said he was blaspheming. He was not going according to their traditions. He was not going according to their laws. He was not going according to their customs. Not all of their customs, but some of it. Some of their customs he did adhere to. Some of the things he did adhere to, but there were other things that he was out of the box with them. And they did not like that. He was different. He was what? Different. And so they say, prophesy, tell us who's hidden you. And many other mm -hmm. things. Blasphemous. Mm -hmm. They spoke against him. So they, they spoke blasphemous things against him. That's why I, I told you that you can blaspheme. You can blaspheme against Jesus Christ and you'll be forgiven. So you, if you blaspheme against Jesus Christ as a man... Or as a man, or as a son of God, you will be forgiven. So, but that's another story. That's another story. We we know we in one in, yes in some instance you will be forgiven, and in other instance if when he's when he's operating as a spirit, then that's a different story. But anyway, as I continue right here, just bringing that out to you, that even these people here they blaspheme against Jesus Christ, and these very same people that blaspheme against Jesus Christ. We got to know that they are and were Jews. Mm. They were circumcised. They were called Pharisees, Sadducees, high priests, elders, and all of these. And amongst them, you had also Jewish people. So you got to make note of that. All right. Okay. Now we move on. Verse 67. And the Christ tell us, and he said unto them, 
if I tell you, you will not believe me. So they are asking him to tell, tell me. The, verse 66 says, And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together, led him into their council, saying, Are thou the Christ? Tell us, are you the Christ? They asked him, are you the Christ? So Luke is telling you what happened in the presence of the high priest the, and the, sin, the Sanhedrins. This is what Luke is saying. Mm -hmm. And they asked him, tell us, are you the Christ? And he said, if I tell you, you will not believe. Mm -hmm. and, and if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. You see, you see that? Jesus Christ is smarter than them. Hence, hence, hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Now, Luke is telling you in a nutshell that Jesus Christ said all these words together while Matthew and Mark were showing you as if he had said it, you know, mm -hmm. um, at different, different periods or different, yeah. different time. Okay? So, uh, mm -hmm. then said they all, Thou then... Um, thou, thou art thou then the son of God. And he said unto them, you say that I am. So in other words, Jesus Christ is being smart with them, but telling them that, yes, you say that I am. And if you say that I am, then mm -hmm. I am. That's really what Jesus Christ is saying. Now look at the word I am, and that take you back to the Torah. That take you back to the Torah or it takes you back to the to, to the, the the books of uh, uh, of uh, of the Old Testament scriptures or the word I am when Moses and Moshe when Moshe said to the to, to the Most High, who shall I tell the people that you are that sent me? Moshe um, was asking the Most High that question, and the Most High said to Moshe, I am. Tell them, uh -huh. I am sent you. Uh -huh. You all get it? Tell them, I am uh -huh. sent you. And here Jesus Christ is coming back again using that same I am to show you that he is God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. And the whole multitude of them. now. So now they tried him and they now take him uh, uh, took him to Pilate. So in chapter 23, they took him to Pilate. And this is now early in the morning as, a, as, 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 as daylight, the, the sunlight begins to break. So we're talking early in the morning here. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him onto Pilate. So we can, we can basically say this would be around um, 6 a.m. in the morning because the, 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 if you know anything about the Bible, the, the, the hours back then were broken up in, in watch. You call it watches. So it, you, you, had, you had the first watch, you had the, the, uh, or, uh, or, uh, the second watch, the third watch, the, the fourth watch. So the night part was broken up. Let me tell you, the night was broken up into what? Um, four watches. Yeah. The night was broken up into four watches while the day was broken up into at least 12 um 12 hours in 12 in hours in our segment so the night was broken up in four watches and the four watches um starts uh, at p.m. 6 p.m. until about 9 p.m. would be the first watch 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. uh 12 uh, you call it in your time a.m. but it's still p.m. 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. basically would be the, the second watch and from 12, which you call a.m., um, okay. until 3 um, in, the, in the morning would be um, the third watch. And then the fourth watch would be from 3 until 6. So we were, we were, um, we were um, talking about the trials of Jesus Christ. And throughout his trial, um, he was tried throughout the, the, the watches. And this was the, the fourth watch that, 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 that he was before the councils, and then now he's brought before Pilate. All right? And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow, this is chapter 23 of Luke, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. So they are now setting him up. 
they are setting him up now against, um, uh, uh, you know, against the, the Roman Empire or, or, or against the Roman leadership by saying that if he, he refused to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. In other words, they are saying that he is calling himself a king, and there is only one king in the nation, and that is the king that rule over, um, over uh, what is it, over, I, I see your text, uh, my sister, um, the, the, over the Rome, over Rome, basically. All right, let me see. I see your text saying the fourth, um, yeah, okay, the fourth, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So it was a fourth, right. So it was a fourth, um, the fourth watch that they were doing um, this mm -hmm. trial here now um, with, um, nope. with, with Pilate. The, when, when he was before Pilate, he was basically in the fourth watch. He was in the hour the hours of the fourth watch, okay, when he was before Pilate. All right, so, so, so just giving you some time perspective here, okay, giving you some time, per, 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 uh, how we call it, um, giving you some timeline, but giving you some time pointers, okay, leading you to the time on the hour of the morning, all right? And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou king of the Jews? And he answered and said again, Thou sayest, right? Thou sayest, thou sayest it. You just said it. In, in other words, he's saying, you just said it. And somewhat Pilate seems to understand when he says, thou sayest, okay? Mm -hmm. And then Pilate later on, um, send him to Herod. So now mm -hmm. here it is. Pilate then send him to Herod. So let's look at what happened. Right? Pilate said to the chief priest now, this is verse 4 of chapter um, 23 of Luke, I find no fault in this man. Okay? Pilate is declaring that I find no fault in this man, but they insist the more, and so Pilate send him to now um, Herod. <clears throat> uh, all right? Pilate send him to Herod. Herod, I believe, <clears throat> was um, the, the leader or the head of, of the Jewish diction. So here it is. Verse 6. When Pilate heard of um, Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. So, so here it is. <clears throat> one of the, the, the Jewish, one of the, the Roman leaders heard of this man, Christ Jesus. Look at this. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. In verse 5, they were adamant, they were fierce, they were angry, they were pressing Pilate, okay? Because the high priest tore up the people and they pressed Pilate even the more. And here it is, um, it is said when Pilate heard of Galilee, because they said this man, he's from Galilee and blah, blah, blah. He asked whether this man was a Galilean. And as soon as he knew, verse 7, he, be, he, he belonged unto Herod. So now when he, when he heard that this man is from Galilee, he remembered that Herod is in charge of Galilee, that Herod has jurisdiction over Galilee. And he sent him now to Herod. So now Pilate sent him to Herod, and Herod is going to try him as well, who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. So here Herod was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was staying in Jerusalem at the time because he came to supervise things. He came to supervise things in Jerusalem because the Jews were gathering at this time to have their festival or their feast, which was the Passover and the time of the unleavened bread. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad. Why was Herod exceedingly glad? Because he was desirous to, to see Jesus, to meet Jesus, to know of this Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to know of the Messiah. He heard of the Messiah. He heard of the miracles. He heard of the healing. He heard of the things that this Messiah was doing in Jerusalem. And he himself hoping to meet this Messiah and to be blessed by this Messiah or to witness the miracles of this the Messiah. And so that's what verse 8 tells you. That Herod was hoping to see the miracle and to uh, receive of this Jesus of Nazareth. Then he questioned him in many words. 
But he answered him nothing. So now Herod is questioning Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ answered and said nothing the same. And the priests and the chief priests and scribes stood vehemently. Meaning that they were so upset. They were so adamant. And they accused him even the more. Vehemently accusing him even the more. And Herod with, with his men of war set him at naught. <clears throat> Meaning they didn't let him go. Meaning Herod and his men did not let Jesus go. But instead they mocked him. The soldiers that. mocked him. Look at that. And not only the soldiers mocked him. But they put a, a purple robe, a gorgeous robe upon him, an expensive robe upon him because now they are mocking him as being a king. So they are giving him a robe like a robe of a king. And they now plotted a crown of thorn and put on his head and send him to Pilate. Send him to Pilate before Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod now came together and they were now friends. So now, when, when, when Pilate and Herod came together now, they agreed together for before Pilate and Herod was enemies. They, was, they were not seen eye to eye. They were not seen eye to eye because remember, Herod had a jurisdiction over Jerusalem and Pilate had jurisdiction over all the vicinity covering not not only Jerusalem but other places as well. Pilate had jurisdiction over other places. Okay? So um uh, or is it the other way around? <laughs> but I think Pilate <laughs> Pilate had had some Pilate had some power. He had jurisdiction over certain places while Herod was supposed to be the king of uh, of everything uh, as as far as my um knowledge of history. Herod would be the king, and the king would be, have jurisdiction over over all the the, the the countries and the towns and the facilities. Wait, wait, wait. But that 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 I'm not getting into all of that because I didn't really study the 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 difference between Herod and Pilate. I didn't really study that part. So I'm just speaking from um, what I know about history and the the um, the setup of the the, the kingdom of Rome. Um, is it Pilate higher than Herod or Herod higher than Pilate? But I know, I know um, they both were uh, what we call leaders. They were both important um, people, okay? Um, one would be governor while one would be king, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, that's, that's, that, that's for another day, all right? And Pilate, when he had called, so now they become friends because now... They, they are in the same place and they are talking about the same man and they have to figure out what to do with him. So when they came together, the chief priests and the, the rulers of the people said unto them, You have brought this man unto me. And one of, and, and one of, them, um, uh, one of them perverted the people and behold, I have examined him before you here uh, and I have found no fault in this man um, touching those things where you have caused him. So that's Pilate. So that's Pilate is explaining that to, to Herod. And, and so Herod now in verse 15 says, No, 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 not yet, Herod, um, for I send uh, you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto, unto him. And uh, um, I was therefore, chast I, I, I will therefore chastise him and release him for of necessity he must re he, he, he must release one um unto them at the fees so he, 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 they're, they're debating now back and forth that barabbas or jesus must be released but one of them must be released and they cried out now the people cried out all at once saying away with this man and release us barabbas who and now herod heard it pilate heard it again and so now a decision has to be made. For um, um, verse 19, okay? Uh, who for a certain sedition made in the city 
uh, uh, so that's talking about Barabbas. Now verse 20, Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus spake again unto them. So Pilate was re ready to release Jesus. But what about the decisions of Herod? What was Herod ready to do? But they cried saying, crucify him, crucify him. And when he had said unto them the third time, why, why, what evil has he done? I have found. So, so, so basically what happened here is that Herod turned it back over to Pilate. Mm -hmm. So he came before Herod, but Herod, um, actually Herod wanted to see some miracles or wanted to see um, some favor from Jesus Christ. And he turned it over to um, back to, to, to Pilate. And then Pilate now had to be dealing with the case before the people and then in verse 24 and Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they require it should be as they require and what was what was required what was required and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison whom they had desire but he delivered Jesus Christ of Nazareth to their will. And as they led the Messiah away, and as they led the Messiah away, they laid hold on a, 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 a disciple or another man who was close by. His name was Simon or Simon. He was a, a Cyrenian. And, and, and uh, they, they come, he helped to carry the cross of Jesus Christ. So that's so. So the trial uh, was uh, was done, and the verdict came in, and Pilate Pilate gave the verdict, and the verdict was to um, crucify him. Herod did not. So so Herod, you know, Herod was there, and um, and Herod heard the decision of Pilate, but Herod did not um, say anything or stop the decision of Pilate. But allow Pilate to to um, carry through the execution. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So it's after one. I must end now. Praise God. I, I thank God for those of you who are here. Hope you did learn something today. Hope you did understood uh, some more about the trial of Jesus Christ. And uh, false witnesses were brought in. We understand that. Number one. Number two, he was tried before the the Jewish uh, high priest and the the the, the, the um, <clears throat> excuse me, the the Sanhedrin. He was tried, okay, before the elders, the and the, the the Jewish council, okay. Then he was tried before Pilate, and Pilate was willing to 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 release um, one of the prisoners, either Jesus Christ or Barabbas. And they say, um, okay, release us Barabbas, but crucify Jesus Christ. Number four, Pilate took him then to Herod, who Herod was in the era, who was in charge of, of Jerusalem. Um, and so um, this Herod uh, was hoping that he would uh, experience some of the miracles uh, and the blessings of Jesus Christ. However, he didn't really find any reason to crucified Jesus Christ so he turned it back over to Pilate and then Pilate um, decided that uh, he's going to say um, crucify him so uh, there we have it praise the name of the Lord <laughs> wow Jesus had a full night and 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 and, and here it is again we, we we tie this in with the with the darkness from the darkness came forth the light as in creation God called forth the darkness uh, uh, God called forth the light from the darkness and, and, and light represents salvation, deliverance, all right? With light, you can see your way with light. So, so the lamb was then uh, to be crucified, which was the next day, um, uh, okay? And the evening and the morning is a, is, is a day. So the evening begins the other day. So he was going to be crucified on the day that the Jewish have their Passover, which was um, not yet. 
because the evening would come first, and then when the evening come, they would have their um, their Passover lamb. So the evening of Jesus. Um, okay, so let me tell you plain and simple. Jesus was crucified. Okay, in the daytime. Okay, in the daytime of the Passover, in the daytime of the correct Passover. So let me explain it to you now. The correct Passover fell 14 days after the second, after the black moon or the dark moon. Okay, remember you have two dark moons. I will tell you there are two dark moons, one that ends and the other one that starts the new month. 14 days he was he was he was uh he had the, the 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 supper with his disciples in the evening so the evening began that that 14 day that 14 day the evening that jesus christ had the lord's supper began the 14 day and the 14 day is consist of the evening and the morning so the evening he had the, the, the started the 14 day he had the passover and he, he instituted or introduced the Lord's Supper at the time. He then went into the garden. Judas came and betrayed him. They kissed him. They arrested him in the garden. Okay, uh, around I don't know what time. Maybe the the the, the ninth or uh, the ninth. I think it was um, it was after supper. So I think it was maybe around nine p nine. We'll call it nine p.m. in our time. There was somewhere around that time anyway, um, which would be. Which would be somewhere like the, the 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 second watch would be like the second watch. So the first watch basically they were they were having the the Passover and the Lord's Supper. They were completing it, and then the second watch he went out into the garden, and then the third watch they arrest him and try and tried him. Okay, and in the mo in the morning in the morning the fourth watch Pilate and Herod and all of them decided to crucify him, and then. Um, from there, they led him to, to um, Calvary outside of the um, city. And then the darkness came upon the land, which was about the, um, the what is it, the, the 3, the 3 p.m. hour of the day, the darkness came upon the land, and there they crucified him. Then when sun, then right before sunset, they took him down off of the cross, and then they went and have their pass over. So they took him off the, off the cross, before before um the, the sun set and buried him before the sun set and then they went and have their um passover lamb that's what the jews did that's how that's how it is ladies and gentlemen if you disagree with me call me have a discussion with me and let me know if i'm right or i'm wrong but i know without a shadow of a doubt that i'm right <laughs> <laughs> Glory be to God. So here it is today. We are getting ready to take the Passover within another week or two. And I've been wrestling back and forth which time we should take the Passover. And when I keep doing the calculations over and over and over, the time that I fall on was either the, the Roman calendar day, um, April, April 3rd or April 4th. But when I go to April 4th, April 4th gave me the 14th day, and the 14th day begins at evening. And there, I, I, I can only do my best with that. Okay, the 14th day begins in, 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 in the evening, and, uh, and there about I, the, end of the, the end of the April 3rd, which is the night, they call it, in our time, okay, the evening of April 3rd starts the end of the 2nd. And the, um, the April 4th starts in the, the evening when the 3rd ends at night. Okay, so there, that's the best way I could tell you. So for those of you looking at your calendar, when you see April 3rd, okay, the evening of April, the day part of April 3rd is from sunrise to sunset. And the night part of April 3rd was from sunset to sunrise. Okay? So, uh, <laughs> I don't know how else to tell you, but uh, I'm, I'm smiling here because it is, it is, it is, um, I don't know if it's a mystery or if it's just um, something that we keep missing and not understanding 
but the Passover is definitely 14 days from the second, it, it, it's 14 days from the, the new moon. But once again, there are two new moon, one to end the month and one to begin the month. So the new moon that starts the month is where we start the count from. And when I, I and when I and when I did the count, um, I came up with day fourteen as as as. Um, okay, I came up with day fourteen. So. Um, all right. Can I say something? Yes, Missionary Sterling. <laughs> Amen. This, okay, in Luke 66, where it said, Jesus before the council, it comes, after them having there, it, it's come right over into the, from the night to the day, you know. And if you look in this 66 verse, it says, as soon as it was day, the elder and the people and the, the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council saying, but don't first, art thou the Christ? So all these things will come right over into the day like coming down to the time when they led him to the cross to crucify him. Because men may have to take off of the cross before the sun set. Yeah, so when, it, like I said, <clears throat> like I said, it was a fort watch, and the fort watch would last from 3, what we call 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. That's what we call, well, that's what we call it in our time. So during that period, the sun, the sun would rise. Are you listening to what I'm saying? During that period, the sun would rise. Okay, that's what it's saying. And that's why they say okay. day, and they say day, so they were seeing light. So, so it okay. might have been, it might have been sometime um, during that time, um, the sun rise. Okay, so the sun might, I don't know what time the sun had rise or risen for them, but it was, they were seeing light, they were seeing light at that, at that time, and that's why they say yeah. during the day, that's why they use that, that word. Because the ninth hour, you can't give up because I was the ninth hour, right? Yeah, but the ninth because hour, the ninth hour is, okay, so that's where we're talking about the day part was broken up into 12, in, into a 12 hour period. So, so, yes. so, so when it says, when it says the ninth hour, it was referring right. to 3 p.m., the ninth hour. The okay. first hour, yeah. the first hour would refer to 6 a.m. Um, for our time. The first hour would refer roughly yes. um, 6 a.m. The second hour would refer to, I think, um, um, no, first hour, 6 a.m., then you have the second hour, then the third hour, and, and so forth. Yeah, I, I okay. was looking for it, but I, I don't find I have it here, but I, I was looking for it to get the had the correct thing. I know it. All right, so you got to take so you take so I'm I'm, I'm right then. I'm, I'm on point. Okay, you're right. You're right. A quick one, a quick one. with Herod. I was thinking that this is the Herod and and look to when Jesus was born and he, and the and the um no. shepherd then went to visit. No, that's a different. This is a different Herod. That Herod had died. That Herod. That Herod died. Oh, okay. That's why Jesus oh, Christ. That's why okay. Jesus Christ and his family went back to um, went back to yes, so Jerusalem. So they, 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 yeah. That's why they went back and um. After they hid him in Egypt for a while, and they heard that Herod died, then they went back. Oh, okay. So this is a different Herod. Yeah. So I was wondering what the same head. Okay. No, I remember that he died. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're on, the, you're on your track. Yeah. <laughs> you're fine. All you're right. Fine, but yeah. Thank you. Okay, so here somebody texts me and said the night part of the fort is correct for Lord's Supper. 
is it's it's the night part of the fourteenth day, yeah, right. and the day part of the fifth day is the day part of the fourteen Bible time. That's correct. That's that's uh, so. But anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, I I I've been doing this. Uh, I, I've been doing the calculation from different um, angles, and then I learned also that the Bible. The Bible months, the days of the Bible months is actually 30 days. The days of the Bible yes. month is 30 days. While the, right. the, the, while the moon, while the lunar moon takes 29 and a half, 29 and a half days okay. to, to show, to end. So the, new, so, the, so the new moon will come after 29 and a half which commenced the 30th. So, so half an hour more, it, the, 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 the 30th day would, 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 would end or commence, so something like that. So that's why we have 30 days Bible month, while the lunar moon would, would cycle 29 and a half, and you have that one day in between that it do the transition from the month, from the end of the month to the beginning of the month. That, that extra half an hour, it, it do the transition. And that's according to the Holy Spirit guiding me, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. And um, I, I, I know I am on point because I fasted and pray and uh, I put aside everything to get this down pack. And I am just remember praying that. and hoping that God <laughs> oh Lord, help me, Jesus. The Romans add on, add on day. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, the Romans, yes, they did. 31.8. What the yeah. Bible says in that it at 30 and 29. Yes. Right? Yes. All right. Yeah. So so with that said, we know um, the the Jews will be taking their supper. They call it the evening, but the evening that they are calling, um, they, they somehow they are off because they started from the crescent moon. They started from the crescent moon, and that's what threw them off one by one day. That threw them off by one day. Yes, um, right. Some people yes. going on the third. Those who are going on the third, um, they start from the first um, dark moon, and that's why they end up with the third, because they start from the first dark moon. All right, yes. um, and yes. and they end up with the third. So when you start from the first dark moon, which is the end of the month you get the third. When you start from the second dark moon, you actually get um, the third into the fourth. So I'm just saying. All right? I'm just saying. So with that said, um, I pray that God will bless you and keep you all. And I pray that your day will be a blessed one. Father, we give you all glory and praise. Thank you for this time of study. Thank you for the word. And Father, we know that your people perish because of lack of knowledge. But I pray, dear God, that as you open our understanding, we will understand more of your word and that we'll digest it. Help your people to gravitate to this mighty God. I pray you'll touch someone out there, dear God, that they will grasp its, this knowledge and be apt to walk in obedience unto your word. I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and as we affirm our um, our our time, we're gonna do uh, the affirmation, Exodus twenty. If if those uh, have their Bible, you wanna get there with me, Exodus twenty, real quick. We're gonna affirm. Uh, we're gonna affirm by by saying the commandments, which a lot of people say that. The Ten Commandments were given to the Jews, and, and by right, the Ten Commandments were given to the Jews. But we know that what exists in the Ten Commandments were given to all people of God. And what exists um, in the Ten Commandments was given to all people of God. Um, if we say that, um, the, if we go and say that the Ten Commandments, yes, was just given to the Jews, that's okay. You have all right to say that. But you also got to remember that all the commandments of God was given to all of God's people, including yeah. the Ten Commandments. So whatever yeah. is included in the Ten Commandments is also given to all of God's people. Otherwise, 
God's people should go and kill, steal, lie, envy, and do all the other things that is written in the Ten Commandments that was only given to the Jews. If you understand what I'm saying. All right? Amen. So, let us be careful when we speak, and let us be precise and accurate, and let us be uh, at... Uh, one accord with the word of God because when we speak we are speaking unto people who are listening and they will follow what you say so here it is Exodus chapter 20 from 1 to 17 and God spake unto all um, all the, the people that he wanted to hear these words and it says and God spake all these words saying that I am the Lord thy God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and you shall have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Those who have it may say it with me. You can recite it with me. Let's go verse 5 again. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Let us honor our mother and father, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God giveth thee. And thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's wife, nor is man servant, nor is maid servant, nor is ox, nor is ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Praise the name of the Lord God. And we uh, we completed with Matthew 22, 37 through 40, where it says, with all thy soul and with all thy mind, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments and all the law and prophet. All right. Amen. God. This is the word of God. Praise God. And so may God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you as we conclude um, this day. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen. May the good Lord of heaven keep you.